We're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Name's Derek Fear Highly, CFO of uh, Dwayne's Powertrains and uh, head of HR at Prism Supply. All right, well, this is my tried and true big twin Evo chopper. Got it when I was 22. It's my first road motorcycle. I always rode dirt bikes and stuff before that, but this is the one that kind of got me into it. As you can see, she's been road wet and put away hard. It's been everywhere. We rode it through California, all up and down the East Coast. I just beat on it and she keeps going. So I bought it from a, um, a mechanic I used to work with at a jet ski shop. He had it all in parts on a rack and I just didn't know anything about them and it sounded like a fun project. Maybe six months later, he's still couldn't sell it and gave me a really good deal and I sold my car and bought it. When I originally bought it, he had all the main components, 90% of the bike, and I just built it how he had it. I was so proud of it at the time. <laughs> it was terrible. Within within a year of riding it, I was so embarrassed of it because at the time, like I had no, no reference. I didn't know anybody was building them. I didn't know there was a whole like group of people into it. So, you know, once I got into it and started getting on the forums and all that stuff, I'm I was like, damn, my bike sucks. <laughs> so, so then I tore it all the way down and, uh, and built it the way it is now. You know, I was building this the same time I was going to school for uh, mechanical engineering. So, you know, spent a lot of nights in the machine shop, kind of learning and making a lot of the bungs and stuff like that. And just, uh, I don't know, I think that's what really got it, me into it. It's just making your own parts, how you want them and making them fit your bike. You know, it's been set up a million different ways, but the first time you build your own bike and ride it down the road, there's just really no greater feeling. When I first started building it again, um, I really didn't have any kind of direction for it. I've always been really into front ends and I just knew I wanted it skinny. So, um, you know, as a roller, I kind of played with the length, got the front end kind of the length I wanted it, which is six over, and then just kind of pieced it together from there from sitting on it and seeing how comfortable it felt, and it just kind of came together. The pegs are kind of a funny story. There was, um, at the time, somebody, I forgot who it was, came out with these pegs called uh, Modesto pegs, and they're just kind of high, just for like highway riding and stuff, and I, I really liked that look back in the day. It was kind of, it kind of was a look. I was kind of just starting to figure out how to make everything, and then uh, Main Drive Cycles came out with this kit. Literally like the same week I was starting to work on them. So I just bought them straight from him. I think it might have been one of the very first sets. Yeah, I kind of had to do a little altering to make it fit, you know, a, a newer engine, but uh, I still love them, even though my uh, my gut's starting to get in the way of me getting my feet up on the pegs. She, uh, that's just how it is. Favorite part of the bike is actually probably the, the gas tank, which um, bought used on Chop Colt back in the day. Apparently uh, Scott Jones, Noise Cycles made it and it's cool, it's super narrow. Like I said, everything about what I wanted to do with this thing was narrow and it just kind of fit the bike really well. It's nice just to have a one off piece like that. That tail light was like, a, that's our two piece light, but I think that was the first prototype of it. If it's not the first, it's one of the very first two piece tail lights, um, a prototype and it's made in steel too. So I, I just welded it to the sissy bar, but um, yeah, that was one of the very first ones and uh, she keeps going. Least favorite thing by far is the seat. I i didn't like it when I put it on there the first time and it's just kind of all I had. I like how she, uh, she cradles the tushy, but um, it's just too blocky looking. And on top of that, it's just beat to hell. That seat's begging for mercy. A couple, two or three parts been pounded in that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Exhaust is just, uh, I just pieced it together from a lowbrow kit and had it chromed. Kind of started with the rear one and then uh, made the front to flow with it. I've always liked kind of the hard lines um, in this exhaust. Definitely lucked out with the oil tank. Um, that came with the bike when I got it and it was handmade by, uh, I was told somebody on a, on a race team around here in Charlotte. So definitely glad I have an oil tank that fits the frame like it should and uh, just doesn't look like something that was thrown in there. <laughs> Buddy Ilya put the smiley face in there, just kind of making fun of how dirty it always is. And uh, ever since then, I just kind of go over it every once in a while. And that thing's, that's been on there for four or five years for sure now, but just kind of part of the bike. The, uh, the keychain is some accoutrement that has uh, recently been put on there in the last two or three years. More of a mental note to myself, you know, I'm a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> a little, little affirmation. <laughs> the grips, I definitely get a lot of shit from, from the boys in the shop. Whenever they have to move my bike, always. They're sticky and nasty and boogery. I usually don't wear gloves. I ain't making a sandwich. So uh, you don't have to hold on to them and grip them as tight when they stick to your hands. So I don't know what it is. Who knows? But uh, I wouldn't go licking on them. <laughs>
Yeah, front end is something I'm, I was really proud of. I got 39 millimeter front end from a swap meet for $40. It's the first time I ever shaved any lowers. Um, I got some forking by Frank tubes on there before he stopped doing it. And I've always been a fan of Mullins chain drive, so have their trees. Those are the handlebars. I, I definitely really like how the front end came out. So when I got this thing, that the engine had like 200 miles on it and it was apparently a crate engine from Harley. I don't even know what year it is, just single cam Evo, but it is fast. So I would like to know if there's uh, you know, if somebody put a cam in there or what. Um, yeah, and I've beat on it pretty hard throughout the years, so I'd kind of like to rebuild it before before she's really, uh, really screwed up. I guess I finished building it in 2013. That was a year after I graduated school for mechanical engineering. And then I worked as an engineer for like 10 years and hated it. Absolutely hated it. Yeah, in 2017, I started doing some engine work. I guess I used a lot of my schooling in that and uh, just learning something different. It kind of just went from a hobby to doing some engines for some friends around town to uh, actually thinking I could do it for a living. So um, three years ago, quit my engineering job and started Dwayne's Powertrains for real. I do really enjoy it. It's, it's never the same, it's never easy, and it's always a good challenge. So I wouldn't trade it for nothing. <laughs> That's all you get. I hope I got it all right. I hope you did too. I ain't doing it again. <laughs> Did it scare you? <laughs> nah. <laughs> that was sick. Frick, mash that subscribe button. Dang, nice pat of scotch pride. <laughs> just you, don't, you don't just come across pads of scotch pride every day. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's sit, see your mic set up here. Let's see what we're working with. Should we figure it out a little better? <laughs> <laughs> when you put Jake, when you put that dang hunk Jake on it, I don't see him wearing them like this. Alright. <laughs> 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 Back to work. <laughs>